Hello. So, about six months ago, just over, I bought this Clark benchtop blast cabinet. And, well, we can take it as a given you're going to need a compressor that can supply sufficient airflow to run one of these things, sufficient pressure and airflow. A couple of extras that I didn't do immediately but that I should have done, that would have made my life um, much easier. So, we're going to have a quick run through those and that hopefully will let anyone who's thinking of buying one of these be a little bit better informed than I was. And the extra cost on top of this was about 50 to 100 pounds, if I remember correctly. Anyway, let's have a look. So the first thing is dust extraction. Now what I've done, this, this was a second hand vacuum cleaner, it was about 40 50 quid delivered off eBay works fine and I took one of the attachments cut it at an angle and made this plate to go on at the end and just work with that all together what that does fits onto this fitting at the back of the box this is a bit of closed cell foam that was for bought for some sort of heater padding or similar on the Herald and it forms a nice seal. The vacuum plug's in there. I don't run it at full power. It's about two thirds of its uh, dial. And that works totally fine. If you run one of these without extraction, you are gonna get fine dust in the air. Um, I was running it wearing a dust mask to start with. And also very, very quickly, the inside of the cabinet becomes very difficult to see into because it's just full of clouds of fine particles. And that just keeps going as you break down more and more of the media. And you see I've got it angled, so actually the, the vacuum hose will kind of go like that. Fits, fits nicely with my bench setup, or acceptably with my bench setup. And the other thing is this air dryer. So I decided not to try and dry the whole system at first. I may do that later, but for the moment it's just for the blast cabinet. So it's just on a short piece of hose, made myself a very simple little bracket out of aluminium. Just plug the air in there, everything's fine. You will also find that you need to change the protectors quite regularly. They they get mucky, they're disposable for a reason, and they get worn out again quicker than I thought. The other thing that kind of surprised me was how quickly these nozzles were. So you can see this is a, it's a number five, five mil bore, and well, it doesn't look like five mil, but you can see it's actually worn to the number, which was, it's quite a lot further than uh, it started out, the size it started out. It makes sense if you think about it, because obviously you're throwing some throwing abrasive through this. But I didn't expect them to be quite so consumable as they are. Not that they're expensive to replace. And one final thing on, so, there's obviously there's lots of different types of media available. I started with this Clark 68 degree, and I've moved to, this is from sandblasters.co.uk, it's the same, same grit, aluminium oxide but it is white. And that all combined does me quite well for the classic car parts that I tend to work with. So just as an example, I happen to have this GT6 alternator bracket in here. So I'll blast a quick bit of it, then we'll see how it comes out.
And there's that part all done. There's a bit of undersealy type stuff on there, which I need to scrape off and have another go. But other than that, sort of result you can expect. Anyway, so there we go. Thought it'd be handy to talk about just a couple of extra things you're going to need with one of these cabinets. Because if you got wet air, you're going to struggle eventually because your media is going to get wet and clump up. If you don't have any extraction, you'll be able to do something, but it's going to be very difficult and very slow to see. So you should be considering that you might be spending about half the cost of the cabinet again to be able to put yourself in a position to have those things, which hopefully is useful information for anyone considering getting one, because it wasn't something I had thought of or planned on when I got this. And for those of you watching for the Triumph restorations, I am doing a couple of upgrades to the garage, I've put some new lights in, I'm working on getting a 16 amp power supply installed so I can have a welder upgrade. I'm doing a couple of little service jobs on the Herald and the Spitfire before getting ready to bring the GT6 in. Obviously I've got some little bits to do on it, but main jobs are on the way. So thanks everyone for watching, commenting, subscribing. If you're not subscribed, please think about it, and I'll see you next time.